One of the hardest things about being in a co-parenting situation, especially during the holidays, is having to deal with becoming accustomed to having to trust that other party, the other parent with the child when they're not in your care or in your supervision, your custody. A lot of people, when you first start out, the holidays is something that people don't realize are coming and how that looks and how that feels and what it means for a lot of us who share children with or that you just don't trust at all whatever the case may be how do you trust your most prized possession the, the thing the person that you're most responsible for that you keep alive every day that you give your best for every day that you basically your world with you trust that with someone that you don't trust at all, that you wouldn't trust to do anything the right way. It's something that a lot of us don't realize will become the reality, but if you're somebody who is in this place of going through this experience, or somebody who's been through this experience, I think the one thing that I found 
in my journey thus far is it really, really have to just do everything you can. Make sure you understand the law. Trust God. You got to trust God. Trust your higher power. And hopefully you have instilled in your child as much as you can, depending on the age, of course, right? To do the right thing and to just be responsible, be independent, and that there will be some type of communication during that time. It's a sucky feeling. I'm not looking forward to it, but I am trusting God. I realize that you only get a finite amount of years, if you're lucky, to have time with your kid growing up to teach and to impact on them and hopefully raise them the right way so that they're a good person. At some point, you're not their favorite person to hang with anymore. They go through that stage of teens and friends and their friends are so important and you gotta let go and just take a step back. So that's why I really have taken a true calling in trying to do my best during these early years. I remember being a child before I hit those 10 years, wanting to spend time with my dad, wanting to spend time with my mom. It was hard to spend time with my mom because I realized there was so many of us. I have a lot of brothers and sisters and I was the oldest. So I knew that time was limited. And, and I, I, I knew that from an early age, I recognized it. So I just tried to be helpful to my mom. But my dad, although he was working when I would see him and being fortunate enough to grow up in a two-parent household, I wanted to spend time with him, but I felt like a lot of those times he would be on the phone. He said he would be working or he would tell me we would hang and then we wouldn't show up to the playground. Or I don't remember him coming to the playground too many times before. I remember being a young kid and maybe going riding with him when he would work or you know, do his errands. And I remember all the times he had me sit in the car and he would say, hold tight, buddy. We were running the business or running the bank or I remember how young I was and like, I would never do that now. You can't do that now. It's too many sickos out here. It was no cell phones. It was no cameras back then. Think about that today. It's crazy. If you're lucky and, and, and you plan it right, you go through that stage of wanting to be with your friends, but then you become older in life and then you want to just spend the time with your parents again. If you value your parents and you respect them and you wish things were okay. I know I wish I lived closer to my parents. I wish I could spend more time with them every day, but I live in a, another state, multiple states away. I'm not looking forward to these holidays, to the upcoming holiday apart from my son. I'm trusting and believing in God that he will be safe and okay and protected, and I will pray that prayer every day. I do count it a blessing and fortunate because I know some parents wish they even had that opportunity. I know some people wish they even had that opportunity to be parents or just parents that are grieving right now through loss and through whatever they're going through, man. And my heart goes out to y'all. I, I pray a special prayer for you guys too in that grieving process. I have a friend whose son is no longer here and feel like she just goes through the most grief every day. She has a daughter that's here and they don't even really talk to I couldn't fathom that. I don't know how it even gets to that. I pray that's never my experience. And I pray that she's able to overcome that experience. Thank you for watching. And if you have any advice and tips and stories to share, please hit me in the comments. I respond back to everything. And if you have a channel where you discuss this type of topics, please let me know. My email is in my description. I will follow back and support your channel as well. You guys be blessed and have a happy holiday season. Get the ball, dude. I just call and catch a play I might just come see you today You ain't I'm stuck up in my ways But love it when I'm playing games That's the only way we get away We start to get You must forever Take the steps To mentally prepare Emotionally prepare for the commitment and sacrifice it takes to be a husband. I really would like to partner with the right woman and just enjoy life and experiences with. But it's also the thought and the realization that most every woman that I've ever had a relationship with in the past 
has changed. And when that change happens, what will the commitment level be? There's a guy that went viral, this white attorney guy. And in one of his videos, he gave a piece of advice that I'm going to take. After dealing with bad breakups and been talking to people about breakups, I don't think every breakup has to go bad. But a lot of them do because there's feelings involved. And people's feelings are their own and they have a right to their feelings. But one of the things that he mentioned is that you should plan or not plan, but have a plan in place for that day that you do, that the relationship ends, right? And because all relationships end, whether it be in a breakup or a divorce, or the untimely passing of one of the parties involved. And so in saying that there's a plan for the end, it's, well, you should have a plan for insurance, you should have a plan for will and what happens after our demises. And you should have a plan in place for the relationship. And it's so much better to do that when times are good. Why not? When the times are good, as opposed to when the times are bad. I spoke on that, I think that's a brilliant idea because well, it's interesting that a lot of women, like, I'm not getting a prenup or guys getting a prenup, but why not? Then some would say because it's like an escape clause or a way out. If you're locked in and I'm locked in, why are you worried about a, a way out, for one? And then number two, we know the stats on marriage, so why would we both enter into a deal that is a bad deal, a system that is not? proven to work that we know it's going to take work and challenge why not say hey we're going to get us our best shot commit but give each other the grace and the space to say hey if i'm ever not what you want let's end this amicably and go out our separate ways in a way that's peaceful and beneficial to us both and not get mean and nasty you can do that man if you set it up in the beginning just like you would set up a, a, a trust on the state it makes sense to me <laughs> I know Daddy would have checked that, but you know. Daddy, I want the question. Wait, Daddy. Daddy, over here. I need you. Daddy, I need you. The crash. Whoa. That's fun. Daddy. 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 Let's go, Daddy. I got a big step. Please. No, Daddy, pepper. Daddy, me yeah. pepper. Yes, me yeah. pepper. That's my favorite. Yes, that big thing is like snow. What is it? I need that. I need pepper. That's why I push this pepper. I know what to do. Ham sandwich. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie driver! Cookie must drive The best driver! No, I'm not! I'm the best driver! Yes, I am. I am the best driver. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> Alright, crash. I trust you on me, bitch. Why? Daddy! Turn his. Oh, yay! I'm pushing fast. I said that thing. It is no good. It's bright. Yes, it's right here. Right here. Right here. Not that one. There's two. That's right. That's right. That's right. I need to. You need two? Yes. Catch up for day. Whoa. More pipes. Oh, I found candy. Daddy? Mm. Uh, candy is. I don't Not see the Oreos. You want crackers? No, I want Oreos. Oh, Dad, I found a new egg game. Daddy, Dad, I found something. I'm not getting Gatorade. I'm not getting Gatorade. I'm not sure I show you the whole thing. Did you see it? No? What? What it looks like? It's green, yellow, red. You know what happened to it? What? It got stuck. It's yeah. God. What's this?